the key track modulator is a node pitch modulator and it, this one is completely driven by node inputs. So you need the keyboard input or node input from somewhere. And how this works is pretty simple actually. We have here this transfer line and if you input a node of C3, there's no modulation applied because it's exactly the center here, which is zero. And if you press a node of C4, for instance, which is here, then you can see you apply a bit of positive modulation. If you press C2, then you apply a bit of negative modulation. So the more you go up or go down the keyboard or your notes, um, then the more modulation you apply, of course. If you want to make this or change this a bit, then you can, of course, skew this uh, transfer line here, with the spread. We can apply more modulation of, of more faster modulation uh, the more you go up or down the keyboard, right? You can also change the center here of this. So you can uh, zero or maybe bring the zero line to D4 or maybe C4. I don't know. It's really up to you. C4. So now we have C4 and if you play C4, then of course zero modulation is applied. And if you go C1, then the same modulation is applied as before when you press C4. So you can change the center here. But C3 is perfectly fine. Also the spread of 64 is most of the times perfectly fine. I think it's also the maximum value. There's also an absolute mode here, which is kind of the same, but you have more nodes, so you can dial in more specific uh, modulation values here for different nodes if you want to do that. But I really never use it that much. I always go for relative most of the times, uh, but sometimes maybe you have a use case for this. So relative is perfectly fine here. And let's close this down. And we have this here on a filter device. And we want to change the, no uh, the, the cutoff here, the cutoff frequency with notes from the note clip, right? So we are on an instrument track here, which, which is really important, That's the instrument track. So we want to change the frequency of this here. So uh, when you double click this frequency knob, you can dial in any frequency you want here, right? But if you double click, then it centers or goes back to a specific frequency. In this case here, it's 262 Hertz. And you can see this down below here on the info bar. Um, 262, which happens to be the case, is exactly C3. Okay. We have also here C3 as a center point or the root node. And you can now apply here modulation to the frequency. And how much you want to apply is really up to you. But in this case, if we apply here exactly 64, maybe you can dial this in here on the inspector, 64, uh, which is exactly the number of the spread here, right? You can change where the frequency knob is positioning with your nodes. So if we take this node clip here, and paint in uh, a note of C3. And give this a play here. There's no instrument on there, so there's no sound. You can see we have the modulation exactly on this line, right? So there's no modulation applied. If we go here up to maybe C4, and see we have now here, we are here on this diagram now, uh, where we apply a bit of, I think it's maybe 12 semitones probably uh, in frequencies um, up here at the snob. So we are probably exactly here with the, um, with the frequency knob at C4 uh, because we dialed in 64 here exactly in, in steps. Um, so it, it, it matches perfectly. So we have basically a key tracked cut off here. We can also use here maybe a band pass and bring in, let's say, a noise. Or let's, let's use S tone, a tone device. We have here a filter frequency and we can go to, let's, so, let's say C4. It's exactly here where the point is, where our modulation point is. But uh, let's go for for bring the noise in and we bring up here the resonance 
you can see we have here picking uh picking noise at exactly c4 and we can check this here with the eq plus exactly at c4 right so we have a key tracked filter the only problem with this is now that this only works uh, on an instrument track because we need notes. You need a note input and there's no drop down menu here where you can import notes from different tracks because we have also audio tracks here. And you probably want to key track also on an audio track, but on an audio track, there's no key input. There's no notes, nothing you can play, right? There's only, only audio files on here. So when you drag this filter on an audio clip here, um, and we maybe import here a drum loop, um, maybe something another 10. So let's drag this audio clip, this one on here. And we have this playing, and we want to key track to some notes happening on here, on, on, on this different track, right? So we have this instrument track where there's only a note clip on there and we have this audio track where there's only an audio file on there and this filter. So we need to get the notes from, from this track to this track only to change the key track. So we can do this by using a note receiver. And you can just import here from the instrument track the notes. And now you can just input here different notes. And you can see it's changing here uh, the modulation values and also the frequencies of the, the cutoff here from the filter. So the main point of this key track modulator is that you need key input. You need a node input. Either you get it from a different channel when you use this here on an audio track, or you use the key track modulator on a device that is on an instrument track where you already have notes, for instance, on an instrument itself or on an audio effect on an instrument track.